you are here with me for the 2020 formula one season predictions so prepare for probably some laughs maybe some head shakes and probably some outright disagreement but we're going to get into every single driver all the teams one by one and talk about where i think each one will rank and uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to go reverse so starting at 20 all the way up to one to keep your interest you probably could just skip ahead but let's do it from in reverse order the 2020 season for me falls into two camps you're either in camp a where the 2020 season is just a throwaway or you're in camp b and i think there's you can go back and forth there camp b is this is a huge huge season and in my opinion of the hybrid era this will be the best season this is the season where the midfield as we'll talk about is the closest we've ever seen and there are major plot lines in the works. You've got Verstappen, he's got a legacy to prove. Leclerc's got one to build. Vettel's got one to protect. Hamilton's got one to extend. Ocon has obviously a chip on his shoulder. I honestly think Kvyat has a chip in his shoulder too. I think that's one to watch. I'm very much in the camp that this is not gonna be silly season will be here before we know it, and then we're in 2021. I don't think it'll be like that at all but let's get straight into it and starting at number 20 and we might as well talk about 19 as well because they're on the same team nicholas latifi and george russell 20 being latifi 19 being russell this is not a write-off year they need results and they've had a lot of personnel changes they are someone on the decline and it sucks to see them fall like this but they need results They've got a change in Robbie Kubica with Latifi coming up. I think personally that George Russell is going to trounce Latifi. The place where Kubica was really doing well against George Russell was the first lap. Who has gained the most positions? Statistically, you look at it and it looks like an anomaly. It's Robbie Kubica. But then you start to back into the data and it's like, well, he's overtaking his partner who outqualified him every single race. Latifi has his hands full. I think that Latifi, obviously, this is a transition car for him. I think he wants to get into a better car from this role and obviously with russell being under merc management he's obviously going to be eyeing the 2021 seat and i think depending on how this year goes for him which in my predictions we'll get to what i think about valtteri but i think russell will be in that seat it's not like russell was scoring p19 p20 p20 p19 no he's got a p12 under his belt look for russell he's and he's a rookie and let's not forget what he did in 2018 to some of these other rookies on the list. I think Russell will be someone to watch. I think this is something that people are underestimating. In P18, we have, and this is one, I warn you, you're not going to like, Kimi Raikkonen. I know some of you guys are hearing that and going, you're crazy. M maybe. I think this is the one that if I got two to three wrong, this is a big one. Kimi is the kind of driver that if he doesn't want to do something anymore, he's not going to drive. I think he's trying to figure it out. He was tailing off towards the end of the year combined with the fact that the car got slower over the year. And it's also worrisome that Kimi's contract is coming up. For what I covered and what I saw, Kimi was always talking about the fact that they were losing time and he couldn't really figure out why. I think he's not really going to want to be on the grid anymore. And I think this season, it's not going to be a total waste. I think that 18, while that optically looks bad, the whole grid all the way up to the top three teams will be so jam-packed. So I've got Kimi very close to Giovinazzi. Giovinazzi will do better than he did last year, in my opinion. It's the same kind of fears. This car got slower. And it's not particularly good for Giovinazzi because I do think he had a route. I think there was a path for Giovinazzi to actually be in that Ferrari seat next to Leclerc. He'd be the perfect driver next to him. He'd be an open wingman. Leclerc, I think, is in a class of his own, which we'll talk about when we get there. But Giovinazzi would be someone that would walk in clearly the second driver. They'd have no issues there. Giovinazzi is someone that needs to step up. I hope that he outperforms what I have him at here. So the 17th will be a moderately underwhelming 17th. I think Giovinazzi had the potential to do it, but I don't think he's going to be able to deliver next year. If he was going to ever deliver in a year and it was going to make or break his career, it's going to be in 2020. And I just don't think he's going to be able to do it in that car. Not that I don't think he's quick enough. I do think he's quick enough. The dynamics between these two will be that Kimi will be underperforming. And Giovinazzi, I think, could do better, but he'll be limited by his car. But he will outperform his teammate. P16, Kevin Magnussen. I think the car will be there. I just don't think Kevin will. When you remove the mechanical failures, especially, and you look at the DNFs, take them out, and you compare Magnussen to Grosjean, which is why Grosjean's higher on this list. Of the points finishes, Grosjean was actually more consistent. And you think about the times last year where it was actually Grosjean's fault, like legitimately Grosjean's fault. And I'm not talking about Russia, which I've done onboards for all of those. Um, Grosjean really had an unbelievably bad luck year. I think that he will outperform Magnussen. I think that people forget how quick Grosjean was. Yes, he leaves a pretty diabolical wake. But I will say that he has matured as a driver. And you look at his 2012 season in that Lotus, that 2013 season in that Lotus I mean, Kimi won one race per season in those two years, respectively. So it's not like it was a race-winning car, championship-winning car. Grosjean was on the podium. He was getting points consistently. So he does have it in him. 
In my opinion, he is still quick, but Kevin Magnuson, on the other hand, I just wasn't that impressed. I really wasn't. I think he has his days, but he was so much more inconsistent than Grosjean. You look at his races, he's gone from P17 and not like as a product of he got bumped off the line or he was in the pit, it wasn't there. But his in the points finishes where he took more points than uh, Grosjean last year, they were just net higher. And again, that's fine. But when you look at the consistency of a driver over the season, I'm, I prefer to go with the more consistent one. So with Magnussen P16, I really do think that Grosjean will be P15. Magnussen also, in my opinion, is a bit of a hothead. I don't have a problem with it. I do think, though, that he will fight on track and he has no problem with it. Grosjean also will. But Grosjean, in my opinion, is more consistent. He is quicker. But I don't think that's going to go over well with Magnussen. And when you contrast that to, say, a Ferrari, I think they learned their lesson and I'll get to that. But I think the Ferrari boys know where the limit is. I think Grosjean and Magnussen don't. I think that this is something that while they kind of recovered and they've been a little bit quiet and they were preparing for the 2020 season, their car looks quick. I like the rake. I think that uh, Grosjean will get the better of Magnussen and I think that car will be decent, but I do think they will trip each other up. I think that's something that Gunther will not be able to control. P14, I have Lance Stroll and I am one of the weird ones that think Lance is actually pretty quick. I think on his racecraft, he's not just some rich kid's son. I mean, he is a rich kid's son, but he's not in that seat because he's just... He's just some driver that, that bought his way in. He was on Prima. He got his trophies. He hasn't done what he should do. But in, in my opinion, he's also up against the most underrated driver on the grid and the most consistent driver and probably the pound for pound, in my opinion, if this was like a fantasy draft. Checo would be someone I grab immediately. And he'll, he's way up the list. We'll talk about it. But Lance Stroll has the unfortunate situation that he's racing someone that's really difficult to beat. And you can ask Esteban Ocon. And everyone's saying, yes, will he out qualify him? Sure. And that's why we'll get to it. But Ocon is going to give Ricardo problems. But Stroll, he'll be decent. I think, like I said, this midfield would be close. So again, optically, P14, not great. But this will be, I'd say, within 15 points, 20 points of P11. So this P14 is up in the air. But I do think he will be the one. If someone had to lose out, it's going to be him. Despite, I think, the racing point, having one of the best cars in the midfield next year. And P13, I've got Pierre Gasly. Yes, he's going to lose to his teammate. Not because I think that he's not quick. I think Gazi will lose to his teammate solely because Kvyat has a chip on his shoulder. He has something to prove, and I think he's an absolute hammerhead. I think he's a bulldog. If I had to bet on someone in the midfield to get a position that I needed to and they were fighting hard, and especially if it's a toss-up between the two drivers and the teammates, I'm going with Kvyat. So that puts Gasly at P13. Obviously, that's going to put Daniel at P12. I think that that will be a battle, a fun one to watch in the midfield, especially driven by these two, will be incredible this year. Now let's talk about P11, Daniel Ricciardo. The Renault will be lackluster in terms of car performance, combined with the fact that, for me, will be the season that Ricciardo is exposed. I don't have anything against Ricciardo, and you can disagree all you want. The good thing is, we can just wait and find out. While Ricciardo does have some strong performances, I think that Ocon will get under his skin. I think that Ocon is especially quick on Saturdays which is where Ricardo typically was beating Hulkenberg, who had a pretty good season, in my opinion, in 2019. It's unfortunate that it seemed like their mind was made up to get rid of him. But Ocon will prevail in this battle, maybe not even always because he's quicker. I think there will be some errors that Ricardo has been making. I've watched over the course of his career, especially as he progresses in age and tenure. He's been making these errors. We look back at Australia. That's one that's, in my opinion, not really that forgivable. You're at your home race. You don't need to be making that overtake. I think when he has something to prove, it reminds me a lot of Seb. There's no other way to put it. And I think that that exposes him. He's got way too big of an opportunity, Ocon that is, and Ricardo's got way too much to lose. Talking Ricardo in P11, we've essentially touched on everything for P10, which is going to be Esteban Ocon, in my opinion. Ocon, like I said, will have something to prove. I think the Renault will be relatively quick. Ocon will come out a little bit ahead. I've got Carlos at P9. And I think that a lot of people are going to scratch their head or just outright not like it. When you look at, say, the gap from best of the rest to uh, like a Red Bull to McLaren, when you actually do it by a percent change, the this was the widest gap we've ever seen, the second widest we've ever seen in this era, second only to 2018. And actually in 2018, it wasn't even Carlos leading the team. It was actually Hulkenberg, who Hulkenberg beat Carlos Sainz by 16 points. So when you look at what Carlos should have pulled in in a P5, so he's got equal machinery his teammate should have been right behind him or right in front of him 
He wasn't, obviously. Lando Norris had an incredibly bad year in terms of his luck. Carlos Sainz then also had the benefit of there being so much jostling from the not only one team, not only one driver behind him, but both of the drivers. So you've got Alex Albon is, you know, in transition between the two teams. You've got Pierre Gasly in transition between the two teams, both of those kind of upsetting the balance of what they're scoring. Once that gets reconciled, when you see that Lando Norris is, you know, having fairly decent reliability or at least it's parity with his teammate. And then you also consider the fact that not only will Kvyat have a good year, I think he'll have in I think he'll outperform the car and that Gasly's performance will be consistent. Albon will be consistent. All these things will now go back to normal. And I think that when those results normalize, Carlos will feel the, I think he'll bear the brunt of it. So now it'll be a pretty decent, you know, fair comparison one-to-one -one between him and his teammate. I think that his teammates will outperform him. But splitting them is going to be Sergio Perez. The reason I have Sergio Perez in eighth place is because he's always been consistent. It's no secret that I think that, and it's no secret that I think he's a valuable driver to any team he's on. For bang for your buck, and just in terms of getting the points they need to get, I think Sergio's pound for pound one of the strongest on the grid. Seven, Lando Norris. When you look at his reliability, his season was understated. And kind of like Sergio Perez, who scored nine of his last ten races in the points, we tend to forget it's clouded by the fact that he just got demolished by his teammate in terms of points, Lando Norris did. But all of his DNFs, for the most part, were mechanical, and there's nothing he can do about it. The delta from his performance in 2019 in terms of points to this season will probably be one of the largest we've ever seen. If he doesn't encounter any sort of these major DNFs that he had in 2018, I really do think Lando is going to outperform Carlos Sainz. I don't think there's any question about it, and I think he's quicker on Saturday. And for someone who's quicker on a Saturday and is having some horrible reliability issues and someone who's developing, that's when you have a recipe for it. You better, you better, I think you should watch out, and that's why I have Lando Norris above Carlos Sainz, which I'm probably one of the only people to do that. P6, I'm going to put Alex Albon. This one uh, felt very safe. I, I think that um, I want to put Albon higher. I just can't. I think it's the dynamics that are going to be going on between one through five. He needs to perform better on a Saturday, and I don't think he's going to be able to do what he needs to do to make up the ground. And it's an unfortunate reality that the drivers above him are so talented. And that's always the case, of course. But the Red Bull, in my opinion, has been a car, at least in the past three or four years, has been a car that you're expected to punch above your weight. His overtaking ability is strong, but at the same time, even if he corrects those mistakes, he's going to have to close up on Max on Saturday to get higher up the grid. He's going to have to close out on one of those drivers. And I think the only person that is going to be at risk with Albon, who I've got in P5, which is Valtteri. So Valtteri being P5 is one that I took very seriously. It was, it was one that I wasn't sure where to put him, but I don't think that he's going to be able to rise to the occasion. If this was any other year, he'd be right there in P2. I don't think he'd overtake Hamilton. I don't think, I think his last season, 2019, was probably his best shot. Because when you look at how he came out the gates, he was, you know, I, in my opinion, I think he had Lewis rattled. But then things start to fall apart. And, you, you know, he's got a couple of performances. You're just like, how, what would even happen? I don't think it'll be quite like 2018 where he had two poles, no wins, fifth place. I don't think it'll be quite like that. I still think he'll win races. But I don't think he'll have, number one, the pole dominance he did. And I think that Leclerc, I think as he progressed through the season, showed that that's going to be something you're going to have to pry from his hands. He's going to be quick, one of the quickest on the grid on Saturday, bar none. And so I think that'll happen earlier. So all the benefit that Merck had in the beginning of the season, and you know everyone's waking up, knocking the cobwebs off while Ferrari over there fighting, that's not going to happen. And I think everyone's going to come out pretty hot this season. So in P4, this is one that I think is probably going to surprise most of you because it always seems like I tend to be favoring Verstappen, plain and simple. But obviously I don't, and this isn't out of principle, but I'm putting Max at P4, and I think almost everyone and their mother has him at P2. I just don't agree. I think that, uh, I think the front Ferrari dynamics, as much as I talk about it, and as much as I seem negative about it, I actually think that it will wake them up. Because Verstappen doesn't have a teammate like Vettel and, and Leclerc, like they're gonna be able to bat on, pull each other forward. I think that that's his, gonna be his real issue. So as we talk about P4 with Verstappen, we can just ease on into P3 with Vettel. While yes, it's probably gonna be a little bit vol volatile and they're gonna come together, but no more than Vettel's gonna come together with, say, Verstappen. So I don't think it's going to be a dynamic of you know, inter-team fiefdoms where they're hitting each other. I do think, though, that it will be, you know, it probably will get chippy. It, it won't be perfect, but we won't have a bunch of Brazils over and over again. Leclerc begrudgingly at P2. I say begrudgingly because 
I want to put Leclerc as the world champion in, in 2020, there's another gear that Lewis has that we'll never understand. And I think we're going to see it next year. But Leclerc, for all it's worth, I think he's going to give him a good fight. You see from Spa on, Leclerc looks unstoppable. And like I said, for someone who I'm, I'm very critical, I can be critical of him. It has nothing to do with what I think of him as a driver. And I think under the right circumstances, with the right leadership, if they put him in a good position, he's going to be difficult to beat. But ultimately, when you combine the fact that Lewis is in one of the best cars we've seen in Formula One, just based on the regulations we currently have compared to the rest of the grid, and the fact that he's just absolute world-class raw talent, undeniable one of the best we've ever seen in a car i think that hamilton will win the driver's championship i think it'll be a good fight all the way through so that's my 2020 predictions and what i thought would be really cool and if you hung around thank you let me know what you think in the comment section but wait i want to include you right so this is fun for me but i want to i want you to get involved so go in the description and there's a link and if you click that link it'll take you to a page where you can make your own table and I think that at the end of the year, what I'm going to do is do a big giveaway where I'll give you some free gift, whoever has the top winning percent. So it'll only apply to anyone who clicks the link and it'll be all your guesses associated with your ID. Once I have your all the results, I'll collect them and then I'll just keep tally. And then the winner, like I said, at the end of the year, we'll get a giveaway. So go to the description below, click the link. And if you want to get involved, you can actually go ahead and make your own table. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this and we can all laugh at my predictions. Well, I'll do another video, obviously, at the end of the year, making fun of myself, or maybe I nailed it and got it perfect. But we will see. Thank you for sticking around. Hopefully, you like the new setup, the multicam, but uh, this will be a lot more like what you're going to get in season. But uh, yeah, that's my 2020 predictions, and I appreciate your time, and I'll see you very, very soon. Thanks, guys.